Hey board gamers, I'm Will, and this is another Carbon Minute. I'm going to play a solo th playthrough of Bullet Heart, and then I'll give my thoughts and review afterwards. This is a game from Level 99 Games, and it is themed on Bullet Hell video games. Now, you'll probably see over here, I have my Mushihima Sama arcade stick. I am a huge fan of Bullet Hell arcade games, and this is a kind of device that is ideal for playing them at home. And uh, I was so excited when I heard Level 99 Games came out with, uh, with this. I, I just had to get in and see, you know, how well does it represent the genre? And uh, does it have many of the things I love from, from the arcade games? Uh, the arcade games do represent a lot of patterns and high speed, you know, dodging and manipulating the enemies to get, you know, through and squeeze your way through. So uh, let's head down to the table and I'll show you how this board game captures that feel and uh, show you uh, how it plays and to let you know afterwards what I thought. All right, so in Bullet Heart, there are eight different characters to choose from. I went with Mariel Martin. Uh, she's, you know, this cool origami folding explorer, uh, and I am quite a fan of origami, so I thought I'd go with this one first. Plus, her abilities are not especially complicated to explain the game, uh, but are not too simplified as well. Uh, there are some easier characters to start off with, like uh, Esfir Volkova is uh, a little bit easier to understand. You know, now all the characters are pretty balanced. Uh, but she is just quicker to, to grasp. So each player has a character sheet that has a little bit of details on how the special abilities work, as well as how much lives she has. Then there is what's called the current, where there are a series of rows, or columns, or rather, with different colors associated. And those columns also match up with bullets from the bag. So red goes with red. There is different pictures on them in case you are colorblind, which is, which is nice. And then there's an ability board that also matches with the character uh, and an energy tracker. So you can spend energy equal to the cost shown in order to perform those actions. Each player also have a bag for drawing bullets from and a deck of cards that represent the various patterns that they are able to use. This, this is the part in Bullet Hell where, where you are essentially dodging or finding gaps and passages through those patterns to avoid, avoid dying. Uh, and much like the Bullet Hell uh, video games, if a bullet ever makes it all the way through and hits you, then it transfers over and covers up your life. And once you have completely covered yourself with uh, bullets, then you are out of the game. Depending on which mode you're playing, that could be different results. Uh, we're going to play the solo mode with the score attack option, but you could play a boss rush as solo, in which case, uh, if any of the players died, then all of the players would lose the game against the boss. If you're playing multiplayer, the gameplay is, uh, is fairly similar, uh, except it's a last man standing kind of game. And uh, even if you die fairly early on, I wouldn't be too worried. The game is not gonna last much longer because this is a fast game. You will normally also use a timer, a, a three minute timer, and the Low 99 crew have actually came up with themed music that is exactly three minutes long for each character which is absolutely amazing. Uh, the music is quite good and it really fits the, the bullet hell video game style. So to get this started, um, we are gonna grab 10 random bullets and then I'll give you guys a quick overview of how it works. I'm actually gonna try not to look at what they are and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops, throw these guys back in. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, so bullets. The game starts with ten in the bag, and on your t uh, when you're playing, 
as fast as you can or as fast as you want to, you are gonna be doing one of three things. You are going to be either drawing a bullet from your personal bag and placing it on your board. And how you place it is gonna be based on the numbers and the color. So if this was red, it's gonna come in on red and move two spaces down, one, two. But other reds, let's see if I can grab one quick here. Uh, here's another, here's a one red. And, but reds will, uh, or rather the, the bullets will also skip into spaces. So a one will move down to the next one. You know, if I drew that two at this point, I would count one, two. So you can see how it would gather up the bullets very quickly. And the more bullets you have, the greater the risk. If you draw a, if I drew a four at this point, it would straight up just hit me and go straight to my health. So we hope that doesn't happen. You, uh, so you're gonna be drawing bullets. You choose how much to draw, but you will have to draw them all by the end of the round. If the timer runs out and you have not, you just have to draw them and place them, draw them and place them. You don't get to do anything to try to clear them or, or manipulate them. So it's best to do as much as you can during that three minute timer. So let's grab a few more bullets here and put them on the board. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three. Now let's look at the patterns. Everyone's gonna have three cards, essentially in their hand. Unless you are Volkova, which I was talking about earlier, she has access to four. That what makes her a little bit friendly for newer players. And you'll see each card will show you what patterns you are trying to achieve to clear bullets. The solid uh, circles or colored in circles or even circles of numbers represent bullets that must be on your board in whichever position. It could be lined up with the edge or in the center or wherever. And then you will remove bullets based on where these little burst some like star symbols are. A removed bullet once it's taken out. Uh, so as an example here, let's say we have this. I'm going to use the origami flower card. I have three bullets that are required as shown on the card, and then I get to clear three from around the top, just like on the card. Uh, in the case of Mario Martin, she has a special token, which when I clear it, it gets to go anywhere. But each character is very different and has different abilities. She's the only one with a token quite like this. And the bullets that get cleared are going to get taken face down and add, added to the intensity track. If we were playing multiplayer, they would go in front of the person to your left, in which case next round, those bullets will add to their bag, kind of like a, a Tetris competitive mode. And, uh, and I'll talk about that more during the review. If it's a boss rush or a boss fight, you are going to be gathering them in the center of the table and trying to accumulate enough to break the boss's shields. Anytime you clear a bullet with a star on it, you get one energy. So it is best to uh, keep spending things to get energy. Uh, also, if there are other star abilities on the ability board, they will also trigger at the same time. So you could have characters with multiple. There are ability tokens that you use in multiplayer that are a one-time use to spend, and other tokens you use for cooperative when you're playing against bosses. But since I'm only playing solo, I don't get to use any of those. It's just me against the intensity track, which is going to get harder and harder as the game goes. So I'm gonna mix this up a little bit. I am playing with the deluxe tokens, uh, in, in case you're wondering, which are nice wooden chunky pieces. They are utterly fantastic. The base game does come with cardboard pieces, which are a good thickness but not nearly as nice. They are uh, good to feel as uh, the wooden ones. So we are gonna go ahead and start. I'm going to start with trying to load up a few bullets on the board. Now Mario Martin, she gets to use her special kind of face token here as essentially a wild 
to help her accomplish her different patterns. Uh, some of her abilities revolve around either pushing bullets pretty far around the map, moving her face around, or clearing bullets around it. So that's going to be kind of the main goal, is to manipulate this as much as we can to clear as much as possible. Uh, I should also mention that once a card is taken and, and is used, it will put it, be put in a discard pile. But you do not get drawn another card. There is actually an ability for that. And that's going to cost you some energy to draw more cards. You will, however, draw back up to the full hand size at the end of the round. So let's begin. I have a three red star right from the beginning. But the more stars, the better. That is energy I can use. Another one. I'm still safe if I draw four. It's not going to hit me in the face quite yet. Oh my gosh. One, two, three. I already have more reds. Do I want to risk now? You know what? Maybe I will. I'm just going to keep trying. I'm going to try my luck. <laughs> see, we'll see what happens. Okay, one, two. Wow, somehow I'm getting all the reds at once. So, let's see. I am going to spend an energy to move a bullet as far as possible. Down here. And which satisfies this requirement now. And I think I might, actually, you know what? I might do that in reverse. I might spend an energy to move a bullet till it hits Mariel, spend another one to move Mariel, and another to slam that bullet down here. That way, when I clear using this ability, I'm actually clearing two bullets, and I get an energy back. That's pretty good. Add that to the intensity track. Keep going. Oh my gosh, one, two, three, four. How am I getting all these reds at once? Straight to my, my heart here. Two green. Not a good start. I can't believe I got so many reds at once. Two yellow. One yellow. Oh, we're doing pretty good. One, two. And lastly, one kind of pink or, or purple. Now, I could try to clear some more. But the challenge with the intensity track is the more you clear, the worse the intensity will be the following round. So the question is, do I want to try to just clear as much as possible, keep my board empty, or do I want to try to strategically pile them up so that I'm not raising my intensity too quickly? You know, maybe at this point, it's uh, probably safer just to pile them up. So let's do it. I'm going to spend yeah, an energy to move Mariel up here. And then we'll use this one. Since Mariel is in the corner and she's wild, she could take place with that red. And then I'll clear these two. And I think now I'll finally stop there. So, yeah, I'm going to stop there. So at the end of the round, we fill back up with energy. Refill my hand, hand size back up to three. That's some interesting patterns. And now because I have four on the intensity track, I'll be adding to my bag uh, four plus four, so that's eight. So at the end of the first round, so I'm going to draw eight new ones from the collection, which is pretty nasty. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, these ones can return bag. And we'll move this up for round two. All right, let's continue. Okay, one, two, pink. 
feel like I'm getting close to this one, but maybe not yet. One, two, three reds. Again, the, the reds. The reds do not like me this game. Well, let's hope I don't get another uh, four red. One yellow. Okay, I, I could work towards the paper airplane. One, two, three pink. I think there's only a few left in my bag. You know what? Maybe I will. I'm going to spend an energy to move Mariel to the central part here. Yep, and then I'm going to use this ability and just clear these two. I'll start easy. Okay, let's see what else we got. One, two, three, blue. One, two, yellow. One, two, three, four. That is cutting it pretty close. One of I should work on clearing some of those things. Now, if I moved Mariel. Now, the problem with Mariel is most of the other characters can move a bullet one space. Hers slides it all the way until it hits something or the edge of the board. So it doesn't make it really challenging. You know, I, I want to see some more patterns. Let's spend two energy, see some more patterns. Maybe there will be something that perfectly fits. You know what, that is not too bad. I have the three, I have a couple threes. So how about this? We're going to do energy, slam this guy up here. Energy, slam it all the way over. Another energy to move the four up here. And then we're going to use the paper craft claymore and clear all three of these. That's one star. So get another energy. And let's see, I got one token left. I should be safe. One yellow. And I think I'm going to stop there. I've already added five to the intensity. That should be plenty. Let's maybe prepare a little bit for more for later. Uh, spend energy to move that bullet all the way up. And, and then maybe one more. I feel like that's a, a safe bet. All right, so I'm back to full energy. Prepare for the next round. Flight of a thousand cranes. It's great. That's a, there's a, uh, I guess it's a superstition or a belief that if you fold a thousand paper cranes, uh, your wish will come true in Japan. It's especially well done for people in hospitals. Uh, you know, uh, their family members might try to fold a thousand cranes for them, hoping that they get better. It's a, it's a lovely thought. Uh, all right, so I'm going to add five more to my to my uh, my bag here. One, two, three, four, five. Plus one, two, three, four, five more because I cleared five. That is a pretty risky intensity track, I have to say. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. So I have 10 new bullets to add. These guys can go back in the bag. And I'm on to round three. Okay, so I'm fine as long as I don't draw a yellow four. So let's just draw and see how many we can place out. One there. I could probably start working towards the thousand uh, the cranes or maybe even the origami blossoms. That one could have worked quite well. It would cost me a couple of energy. Let's let's push my luck and draw another one. Red, one, two, three. That's not what I want to see. Yeah, so let's let's do that. You know what? I one, two, three. I'm three energy away from that but that's that's a pretty good move let's 
Let's try it. So one, move it up there. Two, that. Three, move this. Clear all three of those greens. And that gives me one more energy. Okay, and things are spaced out a little bit more. I'm not as at risk. So let's grab one, two blue. That, okay, that's not a good sign. Let's see if I... Now maybe try to form something up here. That's nah, pretty difficult. Let's try my luck again. One, two, three, four red. Ouch, that was another close one. Those reds just do not like me this game. So I'm still fairly far away from one of these. But it's possible. Well, let's, uh, you know what, let's try it. So one, we'll move Mariel up here. Two, slide this over here. You want two? Yeah, two, slide that there. Three, slide this up. And four, slide this one up too. And then we will clear Yeah, but I can't do both, or can I? No, it's not worth it. Let's use this one, remove all three of these. All right, my current is looking in much better shape right now. One yellow, one, two purple, or, or pink, three pink, one, two, three. That one is getting riskier for sure. And one, two, three, again with the reds. I am very low energy right now. I could probably clear, probably clear a couple things with this. If I move one up here, then I can clear this one. If I move this over, then I can clear two. That's a little better. So not ideal. So let's clear that one, move it over. And clear using this, we'll clear these two bullets. But I am I am totally out of energy. I'm, I'm at the mercy of the bullets here. One, my pink, I am very much in danger over here. And one, two, three, four, yellow. Oh boy, okay. That's the end of the round. Fill up my energy. Draw three new cards. Oh, I like these. And we're gonna shuffle the deck so we get a more variety. Uh, although, you know, I don't think we have to draw, shuffle it until we must draw, kind of like a deck builder. Over this round, we are adding 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 more bullets. That is quite the increase from last round. I'm not doing especially goodness. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 2 more. 13, 14. Oh boy, here we go. Moving up, so we're we're only on round four. I don't know how much longer we're gonna be able to stand, but let's see if I can only, I can only clear out some more of those pink ones. Now let's see, if I move, one, two, I can clear all of those. Or we could go one, two, and clear that three there. I think that might be a good 
It doesn't give me any energy though. That's the problem. Go one, two. And then we'll use this card. There is two underneath, two, and then it clears three. That does lighten up the pink side a little bit, so we're less in danger. One, two, three. One red. One, two, blue. One, two, three. Red's getting pretty dangerous again. They could move. They could just move Meryl there and they clear these two. That's still not ideal. They could spend two, create a pattern up here and then clear Mario and two more. Still not the best. Let's let's keep going. All right, one, two, red. Oh boy. Okay. I think we're gonna have to clear those. And it's not it's gonna be costly. So one, two, three to move Mario. And then we're gonna clear since Mario's wild, we get to clear these three, which gives me one energy. And I'm feeling a little bit safer. One, two, three, maybe not so much. Okay, one, two, that's actually looking pretty good. One, oh, I like it, I like it. One, two, green. Now I could slide this up here and then another one and clear those three. So it cost me two energy, I'd get one back. This is not a bad return on investment. I only have a few bullets left in my bag. So why don't we do that? Let's go one, two. Now clear these three. Get one energy. See how my uh, intensity tracker is piling up over here? It's going to be really bad next round. This card is done. And I'm going to spend two energy now. And. Oh, you know what? No, I'm not going to spend two because Mario can clear bullets around her. I totally forgot about that. So I'm going to spend one. Clear that red, which gives an energy. And then I'm going to move her to here. No, here we're going on a, on a shooting rampage here. Energy to shoot the blue star, get another energy. And then the energy to shoot the green star and get another energy. Oh boy, it's gonna be risky. One, two, three, four, pink. Will I survive? One, two. One, pink. Oh boy. One, two, three, four, blue. There's almost nothing else I can do here. And last one is two green. One, two. Okay, perfect. Maybe I should clear something or move Mariel. Most of the removals seem to be more on the left. So I'm going to spend the last energy to maybe pop Mariel up over here somewhere, just in case. So that's the other round. I am I did pretty good here, but I'm in huge trouble next round. Look like look at the size of this pile. So I have to draw seven plus all of those into my bag. Okay, full energy. One, two, three. And here we go. One. Two, it's hard to count. Three, four, five, six, seven. If anybody has a better way to count these out without looking at them, let me know. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
my 10, 11, 12, an extra 12, so that's 19 bullets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay. I have lasted pretty long so far, but I am obviously obviously not an expert at this. There are I'm sure people who are way better at this than I am. I probably lose against them. All right. So on to the fifth round. Let's go. First, any obvious easy clears. Anything I can do? Can I take care of some of these? These two, no. Go three in a row. Maybe not. No, I'd have to. I'd have to move Mariel and then three more. Mariel does get a free move whenever she gets cleared, so I could take advantage of that and use this one. You know, maybe I'll do that. Let's move these two up. Use this to clear these three. I get energy and I get to move Mariel wherever I want. So I could try to put her in here, but that, that makes blue pretty risky. But also the possibility of clearing three more would be good. I could put her up. Here somewhere. You know, for now, let's just get her out of the way a little bit and hope for the best. You know, maybe if I draw, maybe if I draw another pattern, spend too much energy and get one more. This could open things up for me, or or not. It might not open things up for me. Okay, well let's let's draw and see what I got. Two reds, one two. Three blue, one two three. Oh boy. You know this one is looking much more likely right now. However, I'd have to move a couple, which just does not work especially well. Since these guys are too high up, I got I got to move them down. But if I move Mariel, no one, three. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's do this one here. Let's spend the energy, slam that down. We now fit this pattern and clear these three, which also gives me an energy. Excellent. Okay, all right, as long as I don't get pink. As long as I don't get pink, I'll be fine. One, two, three, or four blue. <laughs> and one yellow. One, two, three reds. Okay. This is looking more and more like a likely possibility. One red. I may I may have to start shooting soon. I may have to just get Mariel, Mariel in there and just start going after them. Because this this is risky. Hmm. All right. One, two, three. Oh, sorry, one, two, three, four. Pink hits me. That's not good. Not good at all. One, two, three, blue. You know what? That might that might be the key to this one. Or even this one. If I move that down. No, it's still not good. Well, let's see if I can get a free Mariel move. So let's spend the energy to move Mariel. And clear these two and Mariel. 
and that means we can put her anywhere. So ideally, we put her somewhere where we can combo. We could clear those three of her. But I don't like any of those options. You want maybe before I did that, let's let's spend two energy to draw a card. That would that would have been the smart move. <laughs> okay, so now we could clear some up here potentially. So we could put that here. Sure, we'll move her there. And let's draw and see if we can fill that space up. One, two, three. Oh, it's getting risky. One, two. One. Oh, no. No. There's still lots in my bag. One blue. This is looking more and more likely all the time. One, uh, two pink hit me. Okay, I can't, I can't take another risk like that. I have to do something. But I need to get energy for it because I just can't, I just can't, can't do it. Where could I clear three and get energy for doing it? Can move Mario once, and she just comes a wild. So this is this is the danger. Usually, I'd be playing this at real time speed, which is absolutely insane. And obviously, I'd be making split second choices and probably dying horribly. That's that's part of the nature of the game. Well, let's just do it. Let's spend that last energy. No, that's that's terrible. I need to get at least one more energy or I'm in such big trouble. I, I can't. Okay. Um, oh, this, this will alleviate things a little bit. If I move her there, and then I can clear these two. Okay, that makes it a little easier. I don't get energy, but at least maybe I won't lose. Okay, four green. I'm still alive, still alive. Two green. Oh boy. There's still a few more left. One green. Oh, yeah, and that's that's gone. Can I use anything? I still can't. Okay. Oh, four reds. Oh, that's it. Okay. Well, I am done. Uh, anyways, that was quite difficult. I made it to round, made it to round five, cleared a fair number. But uh, boy, yeah, it does get tough pretty fast. Well, let's head back up to the top and uh, let you know what I thought. Yeah, I, I feel like it really does capture some of the feel of Bill Hell games. Not entirely, you know, usually you're not manipulating the bullets quite this much, but you are trying to kind of squeeze your way through, find openings. There's a little bit of manipulating on, on high end play in bullet hell because uh, you know that certain shots are fired directly towards you and some are just fired in the same direction every time. So leading the boss and controlling the space is is a huge part of bullet hell playing and controlling the space you definitely feel that part here and and manipulating it so that you can you can stay alive and, and as you saw i only lasted five rounds and then i ate up all the bullets <laughs> yeah, just like when i play in in real life in real bullet hell games i typically bite the dust pretty fast but it's still so much fun just like this game is just so much fun uh that was like a very slow thinking kind of walk through to show you some of the thought process.
Normally it would be played in three minute timers, which is insanely fast. And by the end, you're just, you know, maybe there's two or three left and you're just gonna draw them and see where they go, you know, and hope for the best. Uh, it's great fun multiplayer because it's, it does not last long. Uh, although there's not a lot of direct interaction, you know, you're not doing a whole lot um, that directly manipulates other players or affects them uh, until you start to realize that this is can be played much like a, a game of Tetris or uh, or Columns or Puyo Puyo, where you may want to like save up a stack of of rows. You know, in, in Tetris you can you can save up five rows and just leave that one long line down the side for that straight piece. And then once that straight piece goes, clears the whole thing and then dumps the pieces on your neighbor uh, in competitive Tetris. This is this can be very similar. If you see that your neighbor is really struggling with a certain color, you don't say red in this case, you know, uh, another player could see that my reds are full and I have a hard time dealing with it. They might save up a few reds at once and they clear them all together. So the next round, I'm getting a bunch of new reds and it's straight towards me that are going to mess me up. And, uh, and that is where a lot of the competition comes from. Uh, there is a bit of a, a brain overhead for sure. And some of the characters are pinkier or harder to control than others. But I feel like on an even playing field of players, uh, the characters are all pretty balanced. They're, they're all very interesting. Uh, you know, Mariel has her, her wild token that moves around. You've got all kinds of just fantastic character design here. Level 99 games is, is pretty well known for their fighting game systems like Exceed, and they do just a, a wonderful job with character design here. Not only do they look great and are a very diverse bunch, uh, you know, I have to give kudos to, uh, to the, the wheelchair character, it's fantastic, but they, the characters work thematically very well too. You know, like like that wheelchair character we were talking about, she has the ability of levitation. So her deck, she doesn't actually clear bullets, which is so strange. Her ability is she can just push bullets off the side. And as they get pushed off the side of her board, that counts as clearing them. You know, whereas we have the uh, Ryakagi, who's the Yakuza, baseball bat player, you know, she just sits there for a baseball bat. And as long as the cutler that hits her matches the top of her deck, she just slugs out of the park and it's automatic clear. So there comes a point where you may just gather yourself a straight line and just let them hit you and just slug, slam, 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 free clear, free clear, free clear. And it's just fantastic. Also, the bosses really work well too, and and feel very thematic to the characters as well, right? Like there is a one character that is all based around uh, groupings of three, kind of like a triforce sort of idea, and a lot, a lot of her abilities work in with number three tokens, you know, three bullets, uh, six pat, you know, she has three life six energy, nine patterns. She can clear threes easily or, or move them around. But her boss version also works in threes. There's three patterns. You know, every third pattern, the, uh, uh, you know, every time you lose your third life, you know, she gains more beneficial things and uh, it just works so well like that. Early character that is uh, great for learning the game, uh, Esther Volkova. She has the extra pattern in hand, so she has a little bit more flexibility. Even though her patterns are slightly harder, she just seems to be very flexible and easy to grasp. Her boss version also has extra patterns, so you have to deal with more things at once to deal with. And uh, the boss patterns work kind of like a criteria. If you have what is shown by the end of the round, then you are exempt from the boss's attack. If you don't, you have to perform whatever the boss says you have to do. So I, I, uh, I highly recommend this game. Not only is it pretty thematic to, to the genre, but it is just a super fun 
board game as well. Uh, it's it's quick to set up. It's quick to play. There are multiple modes to play. If people don't like timers, you can just slow it right down and take your time playing it or play cooperative with the boss rush mode. The eight different characters equating to eight different bosses is it, just so much to do. And uh, they're also releasing uh, a small expansion that is uh, on its way, I guess, called Bullet Orange, which very interestingly is a bit of a nod back to the, the shoot 'em up of the Bullet Hell community. There is a, uh, a publisher called 100% Orange Juice that releases a bunch of Japanese indie games and Bullet Hells and some other stuff too. And that expansion is all characters based around their popular, their popular independent pro uh, intellectual properties. Also, there is a, uh, a new individual standalone base box called Bullet Star, which will be coming out soon. Pre-order should be launching probably pretty close to around when this video is going live. And uh, it's supposed to have more complex characters. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do and how interesting they are. You know, the artwork's great. Wish the boards were a little thicker. You know, these are pretty thin cardboard, but they are beautifully printed. And uh, the the currents are lint finish, so your, to your tokens or your pieces will not slide around, which is nice. You know, the uh, the cards could be a little thicker. But there's just so much content in the box that it's fairly understandable that they're not going to include really thick uh, cardboard for everything. Although, uh, you know, I, obviously I wish that was true. Uh, I do highly recommend buying the wooden tokens. They just make uh, the, the tactile sense of the game uh, just elevate it so much. And it, it includes uh, wooden tokens for some of the special characters as well, which is really nice. Uh, but yeah, just uh, being able to feel reaching in the bag and pulling out those nice chunky tokens is uh, it's just fantastic. And, uh, and yeah, so I, I highly recommend it if if you if the, you were into the anime theme or Blood Hell or just want a quick, puzzly, you know, brain burning with a sp speed with a little bit of attacking your neighbors. Uh, in, in, a, in a passive sense, you're not directly attacking, but you are you are competing against them in the, in the the multiplayer mode. You know, I do highly recommend this game. And uh, if you have any ideas on uh, what games you think should be mimicked or what genres that are in the video game industry that you think they should transfer over into the board game industry, you know, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I know we've, we're starting to see some larger profile video games turning into board games, like uh, the Witcher board game did extremely well on Kickstarter recently, as well as the Monster Hunter game. But we've seen RPG-like games and, and monster battling games before. You know, what, what else is there, or what else do you think that is not represented in the gaming, the board gaming community that would be ripe to bring over? You know, let me know in the comments what do you think. And remember to like and subscribe, and it'll help me with the channel. And uh, keep on playing games. This has been Will with the Cardboard Minutes. Have a great week.